These instructions pick up after the Construct 3 tutorial. You need to complete this built-in tutorial before this video will be helpful. Go to Menu. Select Guided Tours. Select Beginner's Guide. Now that you can completed the guided tour, let's get started with this instruction building off of the content provided by the guided tour. These instructions provide a, this step-by-step -step explanation of how to finish the game started by the tutorial. Before we go too far into the tutorial, I wanted to tell you two things. First, this tutorial is created under a Creative Commons license, which allows me to remix the content as long as I give attribution. Here is the link on the screen, and the active link is in the show notes below. Also, this is created with AI software. I am not really speaking these words or have been recorded on video. I am using an AI tool to provide the instruction. AI has mimicked my voice and my avatar. I hope you are still able to find the instruction useful. Let's get started. Now that we have the player on the screen from the tutorial and have added the bullet and have set the background with tiles, let's add a few more objects. We are going to add the monster and an explosion so that when you shoot the monster, it explodes. Here's what we need to do. Make sure you are in layout view. Then double click on the background to insert a new object. Find and then double click on the sprite object. When the mouse turns to a crosshair, click somewhere in the layout to place it. The image editor pops up. Click the file folder image button and find the object you want to upload. Close the image editor by clicking on the X. You will see the object in the layout. For the explosion, move it off the game board. Rename the object from sprite to explosion. Here we'll type over the default and add in the name explosion. Now let's add in the monster. Again, double click on the background to insert a new object, find and then double click on the sprite object. When the mouse turns to a crosshair, click somewhere in the layout to place it. The image editor pops up. Click the file folder image button and find the object you want to upload. In this case, the monster. Close the image editor by clicking on the X. You will see the monster in the layout. You can resize the monster by using the handles on the edge. Rename the object from Sprite to Monster. Make sure each item has the proper name. Click on each object and double check. The names should be Player, Explosion, Monster, and Bullet. If they don't have the right name, select the object and then change the name property in the Properties bar. Also, we want to add a keyboard object. Right click on Layout, choose Insert, New Object Select Keyboard. This will make the keyboard available to us for the entire project. Now we want each sprite we've added to have certain behaviors. Here's a list of behaviors that we'll use. Behaviors are in the Behaviors dialog box. First is Eight Direction Movement. This lets you move an object around with the arrow keys. It will do nicely for the player's movement. Bullet Movement. This simply moves an object forwards at its current angle. It'll work great for the player's bullets. Despite the name, it'll also work nicely to move the monsters around. This bullet behavior simply moves an object or sprite forward at a particular speed. Scroll to. This makes the screen follow an object as it moves around, also known as scrolling. This will be useful to keep the view centered on the player. Next, we have Bound to Layout. This behavior is for stopping an object from leaving the layout area. This will also be useful on the player, so the player can't wander off outside the game area. Destroy Outside Layout. Instead of stopping an object from leaving the layout area, this destroys the object. It's useful for the bullets. Without it, bullets would fly off the screen endlessly continually requiring a little bit of memory and processing power forever. Instead, it is good practice to destroy the bullets once they've left the layout. Fade. This makes an object fade out, which we will use on the explosions. 
Now let's add the necessary behaviors to all of our items. Select the item, click on the behaviors link, and add the desired behaviors. For the bullet, add the bullet movement. Add destroy outside layout to the bullet object so the bullets don't go on forever and take up valuable computing resources. For the monster, add the bullet movement to make the monster move forward. For the explosion, you want to add the fade behavior. This is so the explosion gradually disappears after appearing. By default, the fade behavior also destroys the object after it has faded out, which saves us having to worry about invisible explosion objects clogging up the game. For the player sprite, we already added the behaviors in the tutorial, so we don't need to add them again. Now let's select the monster and modify its movement. Once selected, we should see a list of properties in the properties bar. The speed field indicates the number of pixels traveled per second. Let's slow it down and change the speed from 400 to 80. Otherwise, we'll be overrun by the monsters. Let's also change the bullet sprite speed to 600. We should also modify the fade of the explosion sprite. Let's change the fade behavior's fade out time to 0.5 or half a second. Here we are, 0.5 for the explosion fade. Now let's create a few more monster sprites. To do this, hold down control and drag the monster. This will create a new version of the monster. We'll want to create seven or eight, spread them around the screen, count them if you lose track. If you want to see the entire screen, hold down control and mouse wheel towards you. If you press the control button and mouse wheel away from you, we'll zoom the other way. If you press control and zero, you will return to the original size for the view. Now let's modify the monsters a bit. Let's make them smarter. First, we need to go to the event sheet for this modification. Click on the tab at the top of the screen called event sheet. Click on the words add event. Then double click on system. Then find on start of layout and double click. You will be back at the event sheet. Then select add action. Double click on monster. Then find set angle and double click. Then in the field type in random 360 and click done. This step brings the monsters to the player at random angles so they are not as predictable but the monsters will wander off forever when they leave the layout. We don't want that. Let's point the monsters back at the player when they leave the layout. This will always keep the monsters in the layout and the monsters will come right toward the player if they stand still. Make sure you are on the event sheet. Click on add event. Then double click on monster. Select his outside layout, which is under size and position section. Now pick add action from the event sheet. Select monster. Then find and select set angle toward position, which is in the angle section. Then enter player.x and player.y, then select done. Now the monsters will come toward the player. Now suppose we want to have to shoot a monster five times before it dies. To do this, the monster sprite needs to keep track of its health. We can do that with instance variables. Instance variables allow each sprite, in this case a monster, to store its own health value. A variable is simply a value that can change or vary. The variables are stored separately for each instance, thus the name instance variable. You can add as many instance variables to an object as you like, but we only need one for the monster. Make sure you are on the layout sheet. Right click on a monster. Select add. Then select instance variable. You will then see a dialog adding an instance variable. Rename this variable health. Now we have a health variable that we can increase or decrease as needed. Leave type as number, and for initial value, enter 5. This starts every monster on 5 health. When they get hit, we'll subtract 1 from the health, and then when health is 0, we'll destroy the monster. Then we can click OK.
you can now notice that the variable health now appears in the instance variables dialog and also in the properties for the monster. You can change initial values in the properties bar. However, if you want to add or remove variables, you need to open the instance variables dialog. Also note, every object in the layout can have unique instance variable values. This means, for example, that each monster could start with a different quantity of health. Now let's go to the event sheet. We need to add an event so the monster is killed by the bullet. Click on Add Event. Select Bullet. Then select the bullet condition, which in this case is on collision with another object. The object we will choose is Monster from the dialog box, then choose Done. Then add an action, which will be Monster. Then select Destroy. Then pick another action. Choose Bullet. Then choose Spawn another object. I find the search feature very helpful. The object it will spawn will be the explosion sprite. Let's choose that sprite when we can find it. Choose that sprite. Select Done. Now we have successfully set up the situation where the bullet destroys the monster. Next, we want to add another action to destroy the bullet. Click on Add Action. Choose Bullet Sprite. Choose Destroy. This action destroys the bullet when the bullet hits the monster, so it can't keep going and hit another monster. Now let's turn our attention to the monster's health. We should set it up so when the bullet hits the monster, it subtracts one from the monster's health. This way, it takes more than one bullet to destroy the monster. In fact, it is five, if you remember from before, when we created the health variable and made it five. Find the event that reads bullet on collision with monster. Notice we've got a destroy monster action. Let's replace that with subtract one from health. Right click the destroy monster action and click replace action. A dialog box appears. It is the same dialog box as if we were inserting a new action, but this time we want to replace the action we clicked instead. Choose Monster, then choose Subtract from Instance Variables category. Next, choose the Instance Variable Health. Enter 1 for the value. Click Done. Now when we shoot monsters, they lose 1 health and the bullet explodes, but we haven't made an event to kill monsters when their health reaches 0. That is next. To kill a monster that has a health of 0, we need to do the following. Select Add Event. Then select Monster. Find the item called Compare Instance Variable. Click on Compare Instance Variable. Then choose the instance variable we created before called Health. Set Health to less or equal to zero. Why less or equal to zero instead of equal zero? Well, suppose we added another more powerful weapon which subtracted two from health. As you shoot a monster, its health would go down five, three, one, negative one. Notice as the health decreases, at no point was the health directly equal to zero. So it would never die even though it was shot and lost health. Therefore, it's good practice to use less or equal to test if something's health has run out. Okay, now click on Add Action. Now select Monster. Select Spawn Another Object. Then select Explosion. Then select Another Action. Select Monster. Then select Destroy. Run the game. You now have to hit monsters five times to kill them. We've accomplished a great deal. Let's check out the game by hitting the preview button and see what we've accomplished so far. Looks like we are successfully killing monsters. Next, we'll learn how to add a score. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial. 
that is all for this tutorial. In the next one, we will discuss how to keep score.